nice weather. And Cannon Woodle's kick sails into the end zone. O'Keefe will take it out from about three yards deep to the 15, out to about the 23. And we'll get a look at this Boston College Eagle offense and their quarterback, Emmett Moorhead. The experienced quarterback, however, the team has a lot of confidence in his arm, and he's developed that leadership this offseason. Moorhead on the give to Garwo. Gets through the first line of attack. Gets out to the 30. Give him seven yards. Oh, Pat Garwo, 1,000-yard rusher two years ago. Last year, just 403 yards on 132 carries. Yeah, if he's not a 1,000-yard rusher this year and stays healthy, that would be a disappointment for Steve Shimko, the offensive coordinator here at Boston College. I mean, no, don't, you know, Boston College, yeah, we talk about the quarterback, we talk about wide receivers, but they want to establish the run early in the game, get play action, get the quarterback outside the pocket on bootlegs, and help build third and shorts to help con continue drives and keep their defense off the field. Devontae O'Malley on the tackle. Well, they're going hurry up. Yeah, third and short. Moorhead will just power forward for the first down. How many tight ends do they have lined up? That's old school Boston College on that lineup. Yeah, and if you weren't a tight end, like I see the, you know, number zero, Jaden Williams at 5'9", 186. He's in there scrapping out there. But you know, that play right there, just the entire process of, hey, it's third and short. We're getting to the line fast. We're going to snap it together. We're going to get a first down. That's the type of stuff that you worry about in game one, right? How well are they going to execute that great execution by BC? They're starting to pick up these first downs, gain a rhythm. Fate to Garo, play action. Now Moorhead's going to shoot it out to him, too low, incomplete. And there's the play action. Hard play action, used a guard puller. Moorhead got back, and he had plenty of time trying to get Ryan O'Keefe down the middle of the field. And smart dump off, get the pass a little bit higher, obviously, but on first down, using that play action, look for that as this drive continues. Ray Thomas, number four for Northern Illinois, applying the pressure, second down and 10. Griffin in motion on the bottom of your screen. Shoots it out to him quickly, again low, incomplete. Javon Bird on the coverage, Thomas again with pressure. First game jitters for Emmett Moorhead. And, you know, even though he did start last year, you know, this is new for him. It's new to be the name starter going into week one. You have a lot of expectations on you. You're meeting with the media all week. Jeff Halfley's got a lot of confidence in his quarterback. He's just got to settle down and deliver some of those balls he knows he can make. Alex Broom, a little more of a third down back, now flanking Moorhead. Moorhead quickly out to O'Keefe. His first reception as an eagle. They get the first down and comes up a little bit shy. It's going to be about two yards shy of the marker. Jacob Finley on the tackle downfield. It'll be fourth down and two. And no one's coming off the field right now. So we'll see this decision by Jeff Hathley. Now he does pull his offense off. But you see the offense is staying out there. Like, hey, you know, we're ready to go for it on fourth if you tell us to. And that right there, you know, having third and ten and getting eight yards, that's... That's a perfect display of why first and second down are so important, just to pick up something. Good stop by NIU defensively. Casper Rutkowitz, the veteran for Northern Illinois, standing back with his heels on his 18. Sam Candiotti to punt it. That's going to be a good kick. Rutkowitz is going to call for a fair catch at his 19. 37-yard punt, no return. So we've seen Evan Moorhead for Boston College. There's Rocky Lombardi. Got hurt in the fourth game last year. First time we've seen him since. Yeah, Rocky Lombardi, you know, we mentioned in the Open, he's a seventh-year senior, started his career at Michigan State, came over to NIU, and first year at NIU, led his team to the MAC championship and won it. Got hurt after four games last season, so this has been a long time coming for Rocky Lombardi, who is on the all-everything name list, for sure. On the jet sweep. That's going to be Billy Dozier on the carry. Yeah, Billy Dozier, he'll do some of that stuff. He's played running back in his past. They're going to use him a little bit of H-back and a lot of those hand sweeps. Very versatile player for them. Good pickup on first down for NIU. About five yards. For those of you wondering... Rocky Lombardi's great-grandfather's name is Vince Lombardi. Not that Vince Lombardi. It's another <laughs> Vince Lombardi.
Lombardi will look to throw on the rollout. Hits his fullback. That's Brock Lampe. And that's one of my favorite players in all of college football. It's a throwback fullback. I'm surprised he doesn't have a neck roll. You should have brought one of your neck rolls from home to lend him because he's that kind of a fullback. Yeah, he, he, this is a guy, he'll do everything, right? And this is, you know, he, he's a guy you're going to see at the tailback position on short yardage. He's going to do plays like that in the boot in the play action game. He'll also line up right now like at the tight end position and look at him coming back across the ball. You see him peeking back there. See if he comes back in this zone read. Not zone read, excuse me, inside zone play. Fresh set of downs for the Huskies. Oh, see, look, he moves up. That means the ball's running his way. It is. Ontario Brown tries to get outside, can't do it. Donovan Ezeraku without the first time, but won't be the last time we call his name today. This dude is a dude. Donovan Ezeraku out of Williamstown, New Jersey. Watch number six, the extension, the release, keeping his outside arm free and understanding, hey, my tight end to my side stepped up on the ball. The ball's coming to me. Let's make a play. Loss of three, second down and 13. Trayvon Rudolph in motion, 85 in white. He was also hurt all of last year. So add him to the list of players back for the Huskies. Lombardi looked his way initially. Now he rolls to the right. Has to dump it underneath. A dangerous pass. He was looking for Grayson Barnes. And the pressure forced a bad throw. Yeah, and it was Sheeta Salah, the other defensive end. You're going to get a different-looking Boston College defensive line this year. If you've been watching Boston College over the past few years, it's always been, hey, how are we going to get a pass rush? How are we going to be stout up front? Well, with number 11, Sheeta Salah and Donovan Ezeraku, who led the ACC in solo sacks last year, coming off the edge, they are excited about what they are going to get in the pass rush game. And on third and eh, 14, be ready for the defense to dial up pressure here and get Rocky Lombardi off his mark. Empty backfield. You got Gavin Williams in the game. The transfer from Iowa split to the bottom of your screen. Lombardi will throw. Stun up the middle. Try to get it to Williams and just couldn't catch it. Not sure he would have been able to get 14 yards even if he did bring it in. Good play by Boston College, but you know, that's the answer to pressure that NIU tried for. Thomas Haddock said, hey, I understand what time it is. Let me get that screen game in there. But it's just a really good first defensive series for Boston College. Shutting down the run, the run game and getting off the field. Tom Foley in the punt for Northern Illinois. Jane Williams back to receive it for the Eagles. A little bit of confusion on both teams as they try and trot out some players. Now we get a timeout as Northern Illinois. I guess this sometimes happens early in the season, even you know, in special teams. You want to count the players. Is this player supposed to be in there? Do we have a starter that's playing special teams also? A little confusion. Coach Hammock says, timeout. Let's figure this out. <laughs> Those are the type of things that head coaches lose sleep at night about, right? It's, it's I just want to have everybody on the field on special teams. That, like, verbatim, that's what coaches will tell you before the opening game. They walk through it on Fridays like okay everybody said well had a timeout to spare so made sure they're right it's good looking Thomas Hammock he's a running back at Northern Illinois in his playing days a lot of experience coaching running backs too you think about it Minnesota Gophers were a great running team all those years Wisconsin yep. I mean nobody grounds and pounds like Wisconsin he had Monty Ball when he was at Wisconsin and then the NFL with the Ravens yeah and Justin Forsett as well shame and to go out of bounds at about the 36-yard line, so it looked a lot worse than it ended up being. Boston College will take over for the second offensive possession of the afternoon. We're scoreless here in Chestnut Hill. You all voted in on a tight vote to join the ACC for the 24-25 year as Boston College starts their second drive of the day. Yeah, it's going to be a whole day. I mean, you know, another year, and, and then, you know, that, that's, I'm excited to see how the scheduling goes, right? These West Coast trips are going to be something new for these uh, ACC teams. But, man, like, how fun, right? Expanding the ACC's breadth all the way to the Pacific. Maybe it would be called the APCC. The ACC, the All-Coast Conference. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Looking forward to see what Boston College can do in 23. Garwo, it's been a healthy dose of Garwo right up the middle. Delayed handoff that time. He takes it for a first down. Eight-yard pickup. 
and we talk about offensive line, right? Last year, the whole problem, the big boys. We now look at the blocks up front, coming off combo blocks. You get Drew Kendall, Kyle Hergel, moving their guys out of the way. Boston College reloaded this O-line. I mean, last year, they were having guys converted from defensive line to offensive line. Now they have mahogany back, brought in transfers. It's, it's completely different. Moving on the O-line. This one could go back five yards. Two of those transfers, Logan Taylor, number 65, and Kyle Hergel, number 60, on now man the left side of that line. Taylor from Virginia, Hergel from Texas State. 73, offense. Five-yard Colby remains first out. Hergel's a Canadian, went to Texas State, 41 starts later, now he's at BC. Yeah, yeah, he's here, and they talked about Hergel, and he brings a little bit of a nastiness to this offensive line. Not sure if Canadians are known for their nastiness, but he is. I can tell you some of them on the ice certainly are. Oh, that's very true. First and 15, more head to throw quickly. Way over the head of Jaden Williams. Yep. Saw that a lot last night in that Georgia Tech Louisville game, too. You know, you're practicing all August long, right, on that timing and everything else. Then you get in the game, and there's a little adrenaline pumping through you. Sometimes yeah. those passes sail a little on you. Yeah, and, Cash, you know, you got to, as a coach, you try to figure out, okay, what's going to get my quarterback going? You know, maybe they design a, a little bit of a run play for Moorhead. Get him hit a little bit, you know, in a, in a safe manner just to get some of those cobwebs out. Now the pitch. Broom is looking for a run. He's got some blockers in front of him, but we got a flag down. Picked him about five yards. Tyler Jackson eventually ran him out, but a flag in the backfield, several of them, has got to be coming back. That's going to be holding on Taji Johnson, the wide receiver. Big wide out. They love his aggressiveness, a little too aggressive. Holding offense, number 84. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Replay second down. Soothing sounds of Billy Williams, our referee today. He does have a nice common voice. He does, voice. doesn't he? Very, just explains it in a very concise manner, easy to understand, 10 yards back. Yep. Much to the chagrin of that man right there. You want to establish the running game, which they've done a pretty good job of here early. Yeah, Backing but, yourself up isn't yeah, going to help. No, pen and penalties hurt the running game. It's just, it's tough to make them back up. O'Keefe trying to do it on his own. Good pursuit by this Northern Illinois defense, led by Deron Gilbert, a Lafayette transfer, limiting O'Keefe to just four. You have both linebackers in this 4-2-5 scheme for NIU. They're former safeties, and they got some speed. And so, you know, Boston College, you, you, you saw the run game inside, and you saw them trying to take some shots downfield. Joe Griffin, the one was too low, then you know, missed on the outside, but the rest have just been bubble screens and, and smoke screens on the outside. That really plays to NIU's strength of that fast, speedy linebacker core. Again, Alex Broom in the backfield, third and 21. Underneath the tight end Takis. He'll get dropped immediately after just a one yard gain. And it's Northern Illinois defense has come to play, forcing another BC punt. Yeah, they've come to play. And in Boston College, it looks like the offensive line is churning their feet and getting after it. But I, you know, I'm not seeing as much urgency from these wide receivers running their routes. I think that Emmett Moorhead feels a little bit uncomfortable in the pocket just because he's not used to having that much time. I mean, the last time he was out there starting, it was a much different O-line. He would have to get the ball out in two seconds. So if he waited on that a little bit longer, he had Joe Griffin in the first down. Casper Rutkowitz awaiting another outstanding punt. Fields it at the 13 after a 44-yard kick from Sam Candati. Mic'd up Coach Halfley in pregame. We're going to take a quick break here. We'll be back. To I'm mic'd up. Coach Halfley, one of the nicest guys. Coach Hammock as well. Either team able to dent the scoreboard yet. Northern Illinois had a couple of first downs. They've been able to move the ball a little bit, but haven't gotten it past midfield. Donovan Ezeraku wants to make sure that they keep it that way. Another tackle for the BC defensive end. Yeah, that defensive line has come to play so far. And again, you know, they're going against a really good offensive front for NIU. The NIU's offensive line has a bunch of guys returning that have been starters for them the past two years. And so they have a great continuity, and they do feel like the O-line is the strength of their offense. Good job by Boston College defense so far. 
negating some of that experience. Terry Brown again looking for a crease. Finds a little opening, gets close to the first down. It's going to be just about a half yard shy. Give him six yards on the carry. Good patient running by Ontario Brown. Yeah, Ontario's the, the guy that the coaches love. You know, I, I, told, I asked Coach Hammock, I said, you know, tell me one guy that you've just been so proud of their development, and it was Ontario Brown. You know, he had a rough childhood growing up, but really has come into his own powerful running back, knows the entire offense, but now really understands how his actions can affect the defense. And on third and short, Ooh. No one was home. That faked everybody out, including the BC defense, enough for Rocky Lombardi to pick up the first down. Let's hope Ontario Brown wasn't supposed to, <laughs> supposed to be there in there for that, but you know, it was like looking for to expect a running back. Just good move on Jalen Blackwell. That's one you talk to a defender, don't miss that layup. But that just shows what Rocky Lombardi can do with his legs. Brown back in there, number one in white. Not only is he a powerful runner, Mark, but he was a 10 700 meter guy in high school, so brings speed to the package as well. And you saw his numbers. That's 6.3 yards per carry. Led the match. I know. He's a home run hitter. He can hit it. And he's big, too. He's not a small home run hitter. Fake to Brown. Oh. LeBarne's got a receiver wide open, and he missed him. Grayson Barnes. That hybrid receiver tight end. And he was wide open. Looked like he beat Jalen Cheek on the outside. Yeah, Jalen Cheek, the closest defender, and you see Cheek's eyes were stuck in the backfield on Ontario Brown, who was coming out into the flat. You got to get that depth. That was a miss from Rocky Lombardi. We've seen a couple misses by both quarterbacks in this opening game. Good look at Lombardi. Just one for four so far to start this game. Yep. Just a wide open Grayson Barnes on that play. Got to put it behind you, though. Second down and 10. Gavin Williams, transfer from Iowa now in the game. Timeout. Northern Illinois, their second. It'll be 30 seconds in line. Northern Illinois takes the timeout to talk it over. It'll be a second down and 10 when we come back. Still scoreless here at Chestnut Hill. Thank you, Kels. That yeah, was an impressive comeback last night for Louisville. It's like three different games all wrapped up into one. First quarter, second quarter, and the second half for the Cardinals get the dub in Atlanta. After the timeout, coming out of the timeout, it's Gavin Williams. Mentioned he transferred in from Iowa. He was set to be their starter before last year. Then he had an ankle injury early in the year, Mark, and they went in a couple of different routes. He never really got going. Only had 43 carries on the whole season. Yeah, and you know, he, he's, he's one of the guys, he's a patient runner. He's kind of a compliment to Ontario Brown. Ontario's the more that big hitter, and you know, Gavin Williams, kind of that quickness guy. You saw him finding a hole here, third and short. Let's see if they run a little bit of the QB option. They love keeping the ball in Lombardi's hands. Got Williams behind him. Now they'll bring the fullback in motion. The give is to Williams, looking for a crease. Did he get enough? He did, first down. Good, powerful run by Williams up the middle. It's a good test for Boston College's defensive front. Big, powerful downhill run game, kind of similar to what Boston College was in the past under Steve Adazio. Fresh set of downs now for NIU. They'll bring Rudolph in motion. Hand it to him. Couldn't get enough of a block on the outside. Amari Jackson tracked him down. Amari Jackson, phenomenal play on that last one. He sees his wide receiver off coming. Watch him track the wide receiver all the way across the football, understanding where he should fit and coming up and making a huge tackle. Amari Jackson got thrown into the starting lineup last year as a true freshman, and the coaches Said, yo, they're so excited. He's probably the most talented defensive backs they have at Boston College. Minimal gain, second down and a long nine. Lombardi to throw dangerously as Jackson again made a break on the ball. Rudolph was the intended receiver, but Jackson that close to picking that and taking it to the house. And that's about film study and recognition. Hey, my wide receiver is in this location. I look across, it's number 85. I've been game planning number 85 all week. 
make a break on a ball that's back to back plays on first and second down for Amari Jackson and the best part about it when you're a cornerback you know they're throwing now <laughs> here's an opportunity to get an interception defensive line linebackers mugged up in the line see if they bring pressure man across the board they do they bring five now a sixth one on the delay got a receiver downfield but a nice play by Victor Nelson the transfer from LIU to break it up and force a fourth down. Uh, he's trying to get his big 6'7", 240-pound tight end, Chris Carter, the transfer from Howard, the football. And just if he puts that ball out in front of Carter a little bit more, he would have it. And really good job by NIU's offensive line giving Lombardi some time. Foley's first punt went just 27 yards. This one much better. Fair catch by Williams. He'll make it at his 18. 42 yards on the kick by Foley. We'll keep it here in Chestnut Hill. What a day. I mean, this is absolutely perfect. Not a cloud in the sky, about upper 70s, low 80s temperature. I'll tell you what, Chris, I live about four miles down the street from here in Charlestown, Massachusetts, and the past week and a half have been phenomenal and how about this look who's walking out at quarterback the transfer from UCF Thomas Ca Thomas Castellanos first time we're seeing him in an Eagles jersey and he'll keep it and he's oh got boy. a blocker in front of him knocked out of bounds close to midfield well welcome to the Eagles well, I don't think this is the last time you're going to see him in an Eagles jersey either. Coach talked about Castellanos, and, and we asked him, hey, is it just a package for him? Are there some wrinkles where he'll be in the football game? He said, no, he can run our whole offense. And with the showing that Moorhead had in the first couple series, missed some passes, wasn't able to move the ball down the field, Coach might say, hey, look, we're giving this guy a shot, a little more mobility. Let's see what he's got, Eagles fans. First down near midfield. He'll throw. Outside to Xavier Coleman. He picks up about five. Ashley, what do you got on uh, Castellanos? Yeah, before the game today, Eagles offensive coordinator Steve Shimko told me they actually recruited Castellanos out of high school as a running back, but he was determined to play quarterback in his collegiate career, and he did that, but they were so excited when he entered the transfer portal, and you see now he's already on the field in his first season with Boston College. A lot of quick hitters here, too, Mark, yeah. as he's moving this team down the field. It'll be... Let's see where they mark it. Third down and two. And how about the confidence behind these throws, right? You know, you're just letting them rip out on the side and you know now on third and two with a mobile quarterback a lot more that the defense has to worry about and you know you see Emmett Moorhead here and Castellanos trying to make a name for himself solidify this position Kai Robichaux now in the backfield a little bit more of a bigger back and he powers his way up the middle for the first Robichaux the transfer from Western Kentucky. <laughs> now a late flag on the play in the backfield. Well after the whistle blew. Ugh. That was on Kyle Hergel. Just got up in the face of a defensive lineman. The defensive lineman did perform well. And had a nice little flop, but... Devontae O'Malley, I believe, is what it was. Look, you're, you were a defensive player. You want to get in their minds, get in their heads, and force a bad oh, yeah. play. You, I mean, good move to flop there, take a penalty, have his, you know, the running back start getting at the After offensive the play, lineman. Personal foul and necessary roughness. 60 offense. That 15 yard pull would be assessed after the play. The result of the down is the first down. Especially knowing what you said earlier that Hergel has a nasty yes. streak in him, right? Yep. So if you know that on the other side, you're going to try and play against that. Yeah, I mean, if you can neutralize that as a defenseman, right? You say, hey, this guy's going to get in my face. And if he now all of a sudden the refs and the coaches are saying, hey, back off. Don't do that type of stuff. You can get in your head a little bit. We'll see how they continue. But still first and 10 because the last play resulted in a first down just back farther on the other side of the field 
Run to the outside for five. That's Broom. And leading the way, Kyle Hergel. Right? You know, if you get a penalty like that, let's make up. Let's pull around the outside and get some hands on a linebacker. You're going to see this rotation at running back for Boston College. Pat Garwo is going to be in a big pounder. Alex Broom, a little bit more of that outside hitter. And I apologize, that was Drew Kendall out in front of Alex Broom. You're also going to see Cam Barfield, and we already saw Kai Robichaux, the bigger kind of back they use for peck protection on third down. Play action to Broom. Time for Castellanos. Maybe a little miscommunication that time. Trying to find Lewis Bond downfield, but well overthrown. Lewis Bond actually lost his shoe on that, on that route. Maybe that's why the route wasn't, wasn't run as crisp. You see him trying to put it back on there right now. Lewis Bond, coaches loved him. You know, player after player that we talked to said, you know, who had the best camp? They said, Lewis Bond, man, watch out for him. Quarterback loves him, run crisp routes. They've already gone his way twice this game. Again, it's how do you replace Zay Flowers? Well, you do it with wide receiver by committee. Coleman. Can't get there. Picks up maybe a yard, give him a long, a long yard. Jaden Dolphin, the leader of this NIU defense in the middle, tracking him down. Phenomenal play by Jaden Dolphin. Keeping his flow inside out, making a stop, and you see the Coach Halfley continues to put a little pressure on fourth down as this clock runs out in the quarter. See what he decides on the other side. Well, some time to think about it. Ball just on the NIU that side the of the field. It'll be fourth quarter. and two from the 46. We'll take a break. Defensive battle here at Chestnut Hill. Scoreless after one. But Moorhead, and he's been impressive. He has been impressive. He's been accurate with his throws. He's put some zip on the passes and Really, the biggest difference has been in the run game. And this is a guy, you know, you talk about impact of coaching decisions. Darrell Wyatt, the wide receivers coach, came to BC from UCF, brought him along with him, and here he is on fourth down trying to convert for BC. Well, keep in motion. Castellanos will keep it. Trying to power his way to the marker, and it looks like he may have gotten there with that second or third effort. He's right on the line, and they give him the first down. He wasn't going to get there at first. Just great individual effort from number one in red. And players feed off that. The defense feeds off that. The O-line feeds off that. Good run. Now they want to go quickly. Castellanos to throw. Has time to step in the pocket. Going deep for Williams. Just beyond his reach. Good coverage by Javon Bird, forcing a perfect throw, and it was almost just that. Yeah, and it really could have been a great throw. Just come down a little bit, a little bit shorter, and it's the right read. Ball's in a good spot. Little, looks like Jaden Williams caught his feet up a little towards the end of that route. Little turf monster. A little turf monster. This is new turf, by the way. They put this in before summer practice. Brand new field at Boston College. Whistle before the snap. Full start. Offense. Not all 11 players were set before the ball was snapped. Five-yard penalty, second down. Not the cleanest quarter-plus of football that we've seen, Mark, but it's, I think, guess it's pretty much par for the course for opening weekend. Yeah, and, you know, I think that the penalties, they're annoying, right? But there haven't been any turnovers, and that's the biggest thing. Just keep the ball, yeah, if we can get it back. But you don't want to give any short fields as this 0-0 game winds on. You don't want to give any easy points. Fourth penalty offensively in the game for BC. Castellanos, nowhere to run here, but he cuts it whoa, back inside whoa, whoa. and stays on his feet. He was dead to rights, Mark. Had two defenders right in his mug. And he was able to juke him and pick up 10 yards. Tell you what, when your quarterback can do this, it is frustrating for a defense. And it's exhilarating for an offense. You, know, you feel like, okay, I'd play dead in the water on second down, could result in third and 10. Well, now it res results in third and six, right? That's manageable. That You can pick up third and six. And Boston College, you see what their play call is. They did go it on for fourth down last, last time out. It's four down territory. Castellanos had Robichaux 
Now he's going downfield to nobody, just overthrowing Takis. It looked like he had Robichaux out of the backfield in the flats, pretty open. He might have been able to do something after the catch. Yeah, he did. He, he got to learn to bring his eyes back down. You know, so much confidence in number 80. Watch George Takis, big 6'7 target, but he's just covered. And the deep route didn't break off fast enough. You know, I get, I got to say, I haven't seen a lot of urgency from the wide receivers running routes. And it was something that was a theme last year for Boston College where it was like looked like Zay was at a different speed than the rest of the receivers. They have to pick it up and get open for their quarterback, who's obviously doing a lot for them, but they need to be able to move the ball through the air. And Dottie trying to hit the corner, and he does a really nice job. Nine ironing it right at the five. And that's where NIU will take over. Moments ago, Ashley caught up with Coach Hammond. Hill, after one quarter of play, this game is still scoreless. Joining me now is NIU head coach Thomas Hammock. Coach, your offense is struggling a little bit. You had to call a timeout early on to readjust. What's your goal for them heading into the second quarter? You know, uh, our headsets went out, so we had to call a timeout uh, to get the headsets together. Uh, I like the way our guys are playing, playing with great intensity uh, and effort and finish. It's a physical ball game. Uh, it's a softening process, uh, but we built for four quarters. I, I can't wait to watch our kids play. Coach, thanks sort of mirrors the sentiment that he had when we spoke to him earlier on the week, Mark. Very excited to see what his team can do now on the field. Not much on first down here. Good opportunity for BC's defense to stiffen up, force a punt from NIU's own end zone, get the ball back in good field position. Yeah, 100%. Anytime your punter does what he does, pins him down inside the five, your offense starts salivating because they know, hey, we could possibly get the ball back in striking distance around that 50-yard line. Now it's up to the defense. Hey, how much how much can we keep them backed up and put pressure on their punt team? Lombardi to throw, rolls the pocket. Has a receiver. That's Rutkowitz. Out to the 19, 12 yards, and a first down. Casper Ruckowitz, he's their underneath slot receiver. He's also the leader. He's the alpha in the wide receiver room as NIU tries to go fast. Give to Williams. Tries to find a hole, can't find much of one, gets two yards. Big play there by Cam Horsley, the senior defensive lineman out of New Jersey. And when we talked to the coaches, they said, hey, Cam Horsley, he's got to be the unsung hero of our defense he's a big guy he's had that experience 6'3 315 pound guy he can be our run stopper he did a great job on that last play stuffing the run well they got more depth now too right i mean they they had chris banks who were transferring from temple before last year you throw in george rooks who transferred from michigan to so have more depth in the middle of this line they do playing cover zero here brown nowhere to go Nothing doing on that left side, just a whole gaggle of Eagles making the stop, third down and nine. Yeah, big play by Owen McGowan. The Richards sophomore linebacker. And a third down, Boston College makes wholesale substitutions. They finally have a rush package. Look for number six, look for number 11. These big guys can really get off the edge. Yes, yeah, Salah is near side, bottom of your screen, poised. There's a Raku on the top. That's a lot right there. Tight end in motion. Now on the slot near side. Lombardi to throw pressure coming off the edge. He avoids it initially. Now a shovel pass. Outstanding play. Barnes still on his feet. To the 46. 25 yards on the pitch and catch. And what awareness from Rocky Lombardi. He just sidestepped Eli Jones. Elijah Jones, one of their top cornerbacks, had Rocky Lombardi dead to rights, and Rocky Lombardi, hey, he's been around. He's seen it all. He understands the corner blitz. He snuck out of it and found his outlet. Really good pickup and heads-up play by Rocky Lombardi. Moments ago, we were talking about BC maybe stuffing them into their own end zone from the five-yard line. Now they're out beyond the 45-yard line. Old school with a fullback and a three-point stand, and the handoff to Williams. It's about three. 
Doesn't look fancy, but it does the job. You pick up three yards, four yards on first down. Those things are deflating. You know, you, you just mentioned it. You start a drive inside the four, and the defense now with hands on their hips, you know, hey, it's a different feel now. Now it feels like Rocky Lombardi is getting his team into striking distance. And they're really doing a good job up in the middle. Interesting formation, heavy on the top of your screen. Now they bring someone in motion, that's dangerous. Lombardi keeps it. I don't know if he was designed to keep it, but the defense was such in the backfield, Mark, he had to. Yeah, it didn't look good. And sometimes it doesn't look good because you do something wrong. Sometimes it doesn't look good because guys just make a play. Jalen Blackwell was just in the backfield stopping the pitch and good job on the backside by Neto Akpala keeping his responsibility and staying with the quarterback. It brings up third down and eight. Boston College did not substitute their pass rush team on. They do have Sheeta Salah and Donovan Azaraku on the edge. Azaraku top of your screen. Showing pressure up the middle. Play clock down to three. Lombardi does just get it off. No chance. Rukowitz wanted a call. He's going to get it. Elijah Jones defending on the play, bringing up fourth down. And there's the six-year senior making a big play on third down. And look at the patience. Anytime you start up on the line of scrimmage playing that nickel back position, you know you're about to get a quick move. It was a great job of getting his hand out in front, looking back to the football. Big play by Elijah Jones, who led the ACC and passes defended last year. Foley on to punt once more. And Jade Williams standing at his own 10. End over end kick. Williams coming up to make the catch. Now he'll let it bounce and wisely gets away from it. It'll roll dead just inside the 15. BC once again will try and break the scoreless. The second quarter. Appreciate that, Kelsey. Back here at Chestnut Hill. Scoreless 844 mark in the second quarter. It's been a punt fest here. And defenses have come up big around the middle of the field. Teams have moved the ball a little bit to get it in the middle of the field, but then the defenses have stiffened up. BC running the ball up the middle on first down, pick up four yards. And if you're just joining us as well, Emmett Moorhead was a starter for Boston College. A couple of series in, Mark. They turned to Thomas Castellanos, the transfer from UCF, and he's been in ever since. He has been in ever since, and if it wasn't for two penalties on the last drive, that he was moving the ball well down the field. Just a dual-threat quarterback. He showed accuracy with his throws so far. They haven't opened up on any deep balls yet or anything in the middle of the field. There it is. Right over the middle. Takis can't hang on. That was a well-thrown ball. That has to come, you have to come down with that football. George Tack is, they, they need that presence in the middle of the field. They're 6'6", 255 pound Brad student. That's a catch he can make. Good football thrown by Thomas Castellanos. Tack is the transfer from Notre Dame. Beat up much of the year last year. He's a hell of an athlete. Here's out of that Ryan tight end spot. That speedster in the slot. See if they send him out. Castellanos to throw. Huskies bring just four. Overthrown looking for Bond. Look at that ball. Might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. It sailed over his head. Castellanos is like, all right. Roy Williams got a piece of it. Three and out. Good job by NIU's defense. Roy Williams made a nice play, and I don't know if you're a Boston College fan right now. You're sitting here saying, I, "You know, who who are we? Yeah, you know, are, are we? Do we have Emma Moore? What's the confidence like? We've been hearing all offseason how great he's been. Now, you know, a few bad throws, and now we have Castellanos. Like, who is this like, Boston College team? And NIU's trying to take advantage of the lack of identity on offense that Boston College is showing. Rutkowitz is going to. Let it bounce. Takes a Boston College hop. 41 yards. On Boston, they were needles. They were drugs. They were things on the field that did not allow the students to play. And Pat Garo has gone out to these this team, encouraged the, the, the young players, been with them, taught them how football can change your life. And we're honoring Pat Garo today in his service to the greater Boston community. Good job, Pat. Yeah, love it. 
Check out Hurts Looks Heroes every week here on the ACC Network. Another chance for Ontario Brown, and the Huskies patient running by Brown enables him to get seven yards out. Really good job on the gap scheme with the pullers. Brown just followed the big bodies and allowed things to develop up front. He's picking up these yardage on first down. NIU really imposing their will on that first, these first down plays. Seems like everybody stalls out right at midfield in yep. this game so far. Can NIU put together a drive, some consecutive first downs and get into scoring range? Brown again, sidesteps the tackle in the backfield, but nowhere to go. Maybe a yard. Cam Arnold was knifing in early. Brown looked like he was able to sidestep that tackle, but not the middle of this ferocious defensive attack by the Eagles. So here we go. Third down and the long two to keep this drive alive. Right at midfield. Gavin Sub Williams in the game, Mark. Yeah, substitutions galore for NIU. Guys running on the field, back off the field. Personnel, it looks like some confusion right now. Rudolph will be at the bottom of your screen. Thank now you. he's going to be joined by Patterson and Ruckwitz. And no, too much confusion. Yeah. Timeout. Northern Illinois. Their third and final of the half. Offensive coordinator Eric Eiden is upstairs, and head coach Thomas Hammock's deciding this is a big third down in this first half. Let's talk about it. We'll be back. Third and two, quickly to the line. Ooh. Lombardi fakes. Now he goes deep downfield, has a receiver open. Can they hook up? Yes, at the 20-yard line. He found him. Oh, baby. Right off that play action, I'll tell you what, really good sell by Rocky Lombardi. Amari Jackson was on a corner blitz and flew right by him. And great touch on the pass to deliver it to his 6'7 tight end, Chris Carter. They were waiting for Chris Carter to make a splash in this game. Here it was. Look, right there, defensive back right past Lombardi, and there it is. Good play, good execution down inside the red zone for the first time this game. Red zone, that thing is called the red zone there. <laughs> At the 20-yard line. Welcome, nice to meet right, you. Yes, first time we've had either one of these teams in the red zone. Can the Huskies take advantage? Brown, nowhere to run. Absolutely stuffed everybody on that Boston College defense involved. Everybody was in there, and the Boston College on that third and two really sold out. They had the right play call, just better execution by the offense. And Rocky Lombardi, in his experience, right, seven years playing college football, the red zone is practiced so many times. This is really where that experience can come into play, understanding defenses and what's going to be open. Ruckowitz in motion. Now back to the bottom. They fake to him, give it to Brown. Inside the 15, it'll bring up third down and a long four. Cam Arnold on the tackle. Lots of motions, lots of post-snap. Runners behind the line of scrimmage, seal blocks. And all that does is change gaps for Boston College's defense and now sets up a third down that's very gettable, huge play in this game for Boston College defensively and for NIU. This is a turning point of four points, four point play. Hold them to a field goal in three, and they score, get a first down, have seven. Lombardi to throw, Brown stays in the block. Rukowitz, can he make a man miss? No, he can't. He's inside the 10, down to the six for the first down, but Cole Batson with a touchdown saving tackle. I mean, great execution of the play again. It looks like Rocky Lombardi is building some confidence right now. Again, no huddle, hurry up offense. He's calling the play right now. That call came from Rocky Lombardi. Let's see what it is. He keeps it. He's got to make a man miss. He rolls inside the three down to the about the two and a half. <laughs> as just as I mentioned, he's calling that play. It's calls the play for himself. Rocky Lombardi has so much confidence in his game. And part of what he's developed being a coach's son, being around so many different offenses for so many years, 
he's developed a confidence within the coaching staff and said, look, you have the keys to our offense, especially in the red zone, especially in two minutes. You can call plays and we'll back you up. Big play here on second down goal. Got the fullback Lampy in along with Brown. Now Brown will be as an H-back. Whistle blows just before the snap and a flag. This is going to be movement against the Huskies. That's costly here. Full start. Offense, number 11. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. First penalty of the game against NIU, and that's that hurts. You're at the two-yard line. You can just pound it in. Now you go back to the seven on second down. You've got to open up the playbook a little bit more. Yeah, these aren't spread, throw it all over the field offenses. You know, when you have an offense like that, you're you're constantly going to get incomplete, incomplete 20-yard pickup. This, these type of offenses on both sides, they get hurt much worse by these penalties. Rocky Lombardi split out wide to the top of your screen. It's Justin Lynch at quarterback. Throws it out to Brown. He gets into the end zone. A little trickeration, and NIU gets on the board. They split Lombardi up top. They bring in Justin Lynch. Last year a quarterback, this year a tailback, and the brother of the great Jordan Lynch at Northern Illinois, and they score. Well, Justin Lynch has done a little bit of it all. He's played quarterback. He's played wide receiver. He's played halfback. Really good execution. Down in the goal line, taking a chance, allowing someone beside your quarterback to throw the football, having confidence in Ontario Brown. First points on the board, NIU. Jake Seibert with the PAT and splits the uprights. Took us a little while to get here, almost a full half of football. But one of these teams finally found pay dirt, and it's the NIU. Really solid drive, a drive that is typical Thomas Haddock. Round and pound, get the softness in that, all, that defense. Through little pa passes out to the side, running it up the middle, then a little trickeration on the goal line for a touchdown. Little's kick is high and short. One of the upmen's going to have to return it at 28. Right at the 30-yard line is where BC will take over. Mark, let's look at that touchdown again. Yeah, it was an unbalanced formation by NIU right here. That fullback, don't count him. He's covered up by this wide receiver, so the linebackers need to bump over. There's no one in this window right here, and that's what Justin sees. Just turns and throws it, and there's no one in that lane until too late. Really good job of outnumbering the defense to the bottom side of the field and capitalizing on it. Castellanos back in a quarterback for BC. He's got Alex Broom in the backfield. Eagles looking to answer before the half. Broom with the carry. Gets four. Ray Thomas on the tackle for NIU. Castellanos to throw. NIU brings just four, so he has time underneath. That's Williams. Stop just before the first down marker to gain. They got to get to the 40. He's at the 39. Jordan Hansen on the stop. It'll bring up third and one. Really good decision by Castellanos to come down. You saw him peek to Ryan O'Keefe on the deep corner route, but just took what the defense gave him, and that's that's showing maturity within this first game. Bring up third and one. Picked up, and then some. Ashley, what's going on? Yeah, guys, I can tell you when that Boston College defensive unit came off the field, they were not happy. A lot of conversation going on. And one player, cornerback Elijah Jones, looked at his teammates and said, stop arguing on the field. Another player stepped in and said, hey, we've got to relax. We are doing fine. But they are very upset. They let Northern Illinois get on the board first. Yeah, Elijah Jones, a graduate student, veteran out of Harlem, New York, yep. trying to take control of the team as they come down to the sideline after a five-minute-plus drive that ended up in the end zone. Kate Haberman shaking up a little bit on the play. Defensive tackle out of Blair, Nebraska.
All right, coming up with the auto, auto owners halftime report, Kelsey Riggs, Eddie Royal, Eric McLean, going to get you caught up with the auto owners insurance halftime show. Miami talking about them rolling in the opener. Louisville came back big time last night in Atlanta. And an update on the Wahoos in Nashville. That was a close one last time we checked. Taking on Tennessee. It's all coming up. The auto owners halftime report. Fresh set of downs for Boston College. Alex Broom now in the backfield with Castellanos. Got Broom out here, sees him. A lot of room to run. Inside of NIU territory, down to the 37. If they can use Alex Broom like that, he is going to be effective for this offense. Look at this no huddle offense. You think Thomas Castellanos doesn't know the offense? Here we go, no huddle. Still looking to throw, has all kinds of time going to the end zone. Williams is out there, makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. How about that? You come off a swing pass with success and you run a four verticals. Usually you see that quick to the line. Hey, we're going to run the ball on first down. They wanted to take a shot a little bit too far outside of the reach of Jaden Williams. Castellanos to throw again. Williams drops it. Wow. And room to run if he'd have brought that in too. It's been three drops by Boston College that have really stalled drives. The George Takis drop on the slant route that could have picked up a first down. Another one I believe Joe Griffin had, and then this one by Jaden Williams, which would have get, resulted in another first down. O'Keefe can't get away from the defense. Beautiful job by Nate Falcarsel. Phenomenal play. Hearing some boo birds out instead of Eagles fans. And this is a tricky part of the field. It's fourth and 12. You don't Loss go for it, but do you punt it? I mean, you got to just chip punt it. Connor Litton, by the way, who would be their normal kicker, is out today. So. It's Liam Connor, who is a kickoff specialist, would be kicking field goals all day for BC, and they're opting to punt. But he hasn't kicked a field goal in college. No, right? not since high school. He had a whistle on the play. Let's figure out what's going on here for Billy Williams. Delay a game. Offense, five yard Goldie, remains fourth down. Has a timeout has been called to avoid the 10 second runoff by Boston College. Well, there you That's go. their first. Intentional delay game penalty. They wanted to give more room for their punter. Well, yeah, but they declined the penalty. They declined the 10 second runoff. They called a timeout so they wouldn't have the 10 second runoff. At least that's yeah, what Billy that, Williams said. I think that's why. I think that's why Jeff Halfley's pointing up at the clock right now. He doesn't want the timeout. <laughs> now we get another whistle just as we snap the ball. Now well, first week jitters for everybody involved. Yeah, you wouldn't want to save the time on the clock if you're going to Correction. give it back. Boston College does not want to take that timeout. Therefore, there'll be a 10-second runoff. Please give Boston College back their timeout. They'll have three timeouts remaining. So please set the clock to 15 seconds. Thank you. There the we clock go. will start on my whistle. Okay, 15 seconds. Still sounds so smooth when he says it, though. No question. I mean, again, this is a part-time job being an ACC official. He's got to be doing radio or some voiceover work during yeah. the week. Like Delilah. <laughs> <laughs> Dottie will punt it. And he's just trying to run as much of that 15 seconds off the clock and kill it inside the 10. That's a beautiful job by Ken Dottie. Second time today. He's been able to kill it inside the five. And the clock has wound down. We've reached the half. NIU with a seven to nothing lead over Boston College here on a gorgeous day at Chestnut Hill. Let's send it to Kelsey Riggs and the crew in studio. Turnovers that hurt them. It was penalties. Limit the penalties. Liam Connor will kick off for BC. 
to start this second half. And he does just so. Fair catch made by the Huskies. So we'll see them take over offensively to start this second half. Ashley Strohlein is with us down on the field. Yeah, guys, Boston College head coach Jeff Halfley told me coming out of the tunnel, he went into the locker room, he talked to his guys, he said, look, let's just go out there and play football on offense. We have to execute on defense. Sometimes you're going to get punched in the mouth, and that's what happens. You will give up a touchdown. This is the game of football. He wants his guys to go out there and really do what they know how to do, and he said, you mentioned those penalties. We can't have any more of those. Thank you, Ashley. Lombardi, 5 of 11 for 91 yards in that first half. Brown had that lone touchdown you saw through the air. 21 yards on nine carries. Both these teams offensively challenged, but the one drive of the game that was able to end up in a touchdown is Northern Illinois. Here's Brown again. Cuts it back, has a hole, gets to the sticks, and he's going to be just a little bit shy. Maybe a foot, foot and a half shy of the first down. Nine yards for Brown. Good carry to start the second half. Yeah, good adjustment by Rocky Lombardi. He changed the play to go opposite. Put the run game to the right-hand side. He wanted to run that B-gap inside zone. And a good job by Ontario Brown finding that opening and nine yards on first down. He wants to get on the hip of 69. Nolan Potter, NFL prospect at that right tackle spot. Brown. Bounce outside, lost the football and got it back. Not only did he get it back, but he picked up about seven yards after he got it back. <laughs> Talk about friendly bounces. Ontario on the split zone. You see the tight end coming back. And ball bounces right to him. Another huge run. That's back to back. You know, Jeff Hafley said, hey, we'll get hit in the mouth. You don't want to get hit in the mouth on the first two plays of the second half. Sometimes on defense, it's time to start hitting people in the mouth. That about equaled Brown's entire rushing output in the first half. Those two plays. Now they're close to midfield. Lombardi under center. Give to Lynch on the end around, and he's going to be stuffed for no gain, maybe even a loss. Jalen Blackwell in the backfield. Good trigger by Jalen Blackwell. Lost a yard, second and 11. Eric Eidsness, the offensive coordinator, you know, he's just running his game plan. I think when he went back and he said, hey, let's, let's take a recap of this first half, it was, hey, we're doing what we need to do. Right now we're in the lead. They, Boston College hasn't shown any signs of really being able to put points on the board. Let's run the football, get back to play action. I'm sure we'll see a deep ball at some point. Lombardi stands tall in the pocket, has a receiver downfield. First down and more. That's Carter again. Carter's listed as a tight end, but he's, I mean, he just looks to me like a tall receiver out there. Yeah, and anytime you get crowded and you're a quarterback, you try to look for the biggest white jersey you can find. That's going to be Chris Carter, number 11. This time to the outside, finds Trayvon Rudolph. That might be his first catch of the day. Four yards for Rudolph, injured all of last year. Now back in the lineup, and they missed his explosiveness, 85. They missed his explosiveness. They, you know, they missed his ability. And it was really his freshman year when they won the MAC that he had a coming out party. He's a former walk-on and got hurt last year and coming back as the leading receiver. It felt like he's worked really hard this offseason and taking a leadership role on the offense. Yeah, two years ago, 51 catches, 900 yards, and seven touchdowns. Lombardi steps up. Wheel route, trying to find Lynch out of the backfield. It was almost picked off on the deflection. Nice job by Victor Nelson in coverage, and Alex Washington was there looking for the deflection. Couldn't quite bring it in, though. Yeah, and these are the things that Boston College is excited about in their defense. They have depth. Victor Nelson, the backup strong safety, backing up John Pupil. He's a transfer in from, Anna, from Long Island University. They love his length. They love his awareness. Really good job. When the starter's out, making a big play, bringing up third down. Third down and six. Gavin Williams in the backfield with Rocky Lombardi. Lampy in motion. He'll block. They give it to Williams. Has blockers on the edge. Gets the first down and a lot more. Inside the 20. Bangs his way down to the 15. Big chunks in this run game on this first drive for NIU. NIU collapsed the edge of the Boston College defense. 
Good job sealing off the middle linebacker. You see number five, Cam Arnold, not able to get over top and another big run. This is exactly how Thomas Hammock wanted his team to start this second half. You score at the end of the first, you march down the field, first down on the 15 yard line. That's what you'd like to see. Lombardi split out again to the bottom of your screen. There he is. Lynch keeps it inside the five, tried to get to the pylon, but was banged out of bounds by Nelson again. 13 yards on the keeper. So they're using Justin Lynch in a variety of different packages, and he's making the most of it. They really are, and got away with a little hold on the edge, it looks like. But where two years ago you might have seen Rocky Lombardi do some of that stuff, you know, we talked to coach, they want to protect Rocky. You know, not as much designed run for him, and it looks like their plan is to bring Justin Lynch in those situations, and he's been very successful. And he can throw it because he has a touchdown pass, the only touchdown of this game in the first half. First and goal. Three tight ends in the game. Brown now in motion. He'll keep it on the end around and will score easily. His second of the day, one receiving, one rushing. NIU increases their advantage. And no resistance from Jeff Halfley's defense on that drive. Great execution by the offense. They go inside run, they go outside run. But the edges, shore up the edges of your defense. You got to send it back inside. Jeff Halfley being a defensive guy is not going to be pleased. Great block on the outside by Grayson Barnes, who's had a heck of a game, even though sure. he's not putting up huge numbers in the receiving game. He's been all over the place. Now Seibert for the PAT try. That's good. But he starts school here in the Boston area. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of these students live off campus, right? And this was in the rentals turnover. Rentals turnover wow. September 1st, so you see all the mattresses on the side <laughs> of the road. It's, yep. tell you what, if you got a minivan or something, you could do some good shopping oh, on the side gosh. of the road in Boston. Little boots it into the end zone. O'Keefe, haven't seen much of him today, trying to get it going in the return game. Now he's got blockers in front of him, sidesteps a tackler and was almost loose. 27 yards on the Ritz Virginia last year. They Ooh. took and they took the Cavaliers right down in the last second. That's a very well coached football team. They have some playmakers too. One of their playmakers from last year is now switched, right? Ollie Jennings is now at Virginia Tech. Yep, you're right. <laughs> so check him out. One of the top receivers in the conference, we think. Flag on the play. We'll wait to hear from Billy Williams. Holding offense number 73. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Remains first out. Not a great start offensively for Coach Halfley here in the second half. Christian Mahogany guilty of the holding call. He's got Emmett Moorhead back in a quarterback, Mark. Yeah, and I think, yeah, I, yeah. who knows, right? The, the, the mindset right now in terms of quarterbacks and it just is such a pivotal part of this game and a pivotal part of their season. Garwell looking to get the running game oh, going. Bounces oh off a tackler, carrying another couple of tacklers forward to shy of the 30. C.J. Brown on the tackle. That 13 yards puts him over 100 yards rushing on the game and significant because last year they averaged just over 63 a game. So they wanted to improve that part of the game doing it here but now they face a third and six and saw Pat Garwell I mean this dude is just one solid muscle and that is reminiscent of the AJ Dillon days just running over safeties AJ Dillon in the house today saw him on the field being honored before the game with his wife Gabrielle and his new baby Trey and that's a running back right there that we would love to live in A.J. Dillon's shoes. You see two for eight on third down. Third six, more ahead to throw. The sideline, going up to make the catch beautifully on that sideline, the far sideline, was Joe Griffin. We talked in the open about how they've had so many playmakers on the outside, whether it's O'Keefe coming in this year, whether it's a big play Zay last year in that 5'11", six-foot range. Now they got a 6'3", dude in Griffin on the outside. Yeah, and that's a throw into double coverage. Not a great throw, except... When you have a wide receiver like Joe Griffin, a great play, individual effort by Griffin. 
This is where BC has stalled out offensively all afternoon long, right around that big red BC marker at midfield. Moorhead throwing. Just disconnects with Griffin again. And NIU, they are not afraid of the pass game. Their safeties are cheated up. They're playing man-to-man -man on the receivers on the outside. Joe Griffin, he was manned up, and a slant route, that has to be caught, has to be delivered, has to be caught. But these types of miscues, you continue these into the third quarter, this 14-point deficit is going to look bigger and bigger. Second down and 10 for Coach Halfley and his crew. They bring in Alex Broom. Bond in motion. Now he goes back outside. They'll reverse it to O'Keefe. And IU strings it out. O'Keefe takes a big hit. Gets about two yards. Really paid for his effort. Jacob Finley came up in that cornerback spot and stuck him. A lot of excitement around Ryan O'Keefe. Officials timeout for injury. <laughs> Finley might be feeling it after that hit. Yeah. But here he comes in. Ooh, helmet on the knee even. Yeah. And I think it's the stumble. You know, that's it's, it's a good tackle. It's just, you know, sometimes you get that knee to the head. I think they're probably looking at him for a concussion. Third down and eight. Converted last time on third down. Here comes pressure. It's picked up initially. Moorhead throws. Can't connect with Takis. James Esther led the way for the Huskies. Beautifully timed. A little delay on that blitz. Forcing Moorhead out of the pocket. Yeah, good job bringing pressure and really inaccurate. You know, this is the type of play you got to make man to man across the board in the back end. I mean, this is what you want for your wide receivers. Now, I will give some credit to these quarterbacks. The wide receivers are doing nothing in terms of getting off of corners and getting open. Candotti forces Rutkowitz back at his eight. He makes a fair catch. Candotti's been their best player on the day. Northern Illinois has got to go the full length of the field, but they're up 14. <laughs> yeah, Matthias and I have talked to, we say, hey, look, if you want to throw 94 up on that wall and just do like her Zanuka, we're totally right. fine with it. I think both of you should get that honor for sure. I'll be a couple of others that you'll see over the next couple of years. Andre Williams, a huge career as a running back here, but I think you and the 94s should have a spot up there between you two guys. And we'll get a four up there eventually, too. Zay Flowers, really excited to see what he's going to do in the NFL. And, you know, O'Keefe hopes you could put two fours up there for yeah. both he and Flowers, but he's not off to a great start today. We haven't seen much of four in red. No, only 10 yards receiving. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. Lombardi will throw again. As time, Rutkowitz makes the catch. And he's up near the first down marker. He's right on it. That's a really good route it and is. throw by Lombardi, isn't it? And a lot of credit to NIU. And this offensive scheme, understanding Boston College is going to play a lot of man-to-man. -man. Hey, we're going to get a mismatch with a safety on a wide receiver and just working leverages. And good route, good execution. And that's why NIU, the score looks like it is. They're executing their offense, and Boston College is not. Fresh set of downs as we tick inside. We're close to the halfway mark of this third quarter. Lombardi to throw quickly as a receiver. That's Rudolph. They want the ball in his hands in every way possible, and he's going to get another first down. Great job. They got Chris Carter, the big tight end, number 11, out in front, blocking a cornerback. I mean, it's, again, another great execution, and it doesn't seem like the awareness for Boston College defensively is there. Hey, we got a big tight end out here and a speedy wide receiver. Do we think they might run behind the big tight end and give it to the speedy wide receiver? Lombardi to throw. Fakes and now loses the football. Still loose. 
I think the Eagles may have come up with it at the bottom of the pile. This will be a huge turnover, and they do. Roy on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Boston College. Lombardi's first real mistake of the day, and Chris Banks was right there to make him pay for falling on it. Boston College is now in business. Big mistake by Lombardi, but credit to number four. Watch Neto Akpala. He does jump, don't want to jump when he pumps, but he stayed home for the quarterback. And then you see the scrappiness of Boston College pulling that back out. I wonder if Akpala got a piece of it there when it was I don't know. Really on the hands. field of a fumble yeah, and, is under review. And they might be looking at that arm. It, you know, it, it looks like he tries to pump fake a little sidearm pass. Well, tuck rule here. That's a cool camera angle. Good job, cameraman. I wonder if Neto got a piece of the ball and dislodged it because it did look like Lombardi was trying to bring it back. Like yeah. He wanted a sidearm throw and then was trying to bring it back when Akpala did not jump. Quick hands by Neto Akpala to get in there yeah. regardless. Let's take a look. No, he definitely brought it back. You yeah, know what I'm saying? He brought it back and you know, the arm motion's going forward. It doesn't look like he ever secures it going down to the ground. You see this right here. Like, that's a pass attempt. I, I, you know, like, the, to me, I think... If NFL, it comes out during that arm I motion do, I forward. I think so. It's when it's coming back into his body. So anytime that hand starts moving forward, even if it's sidearm, I think the pride's call incomplete. Jason Boykin is our replay official. After review, the really on the field of a fumble stands. All right, First down, cross the goal. Not enough for Boykin and the crew to change it. So it's a big play by that Boston College defense. They absolutely needed one. Now they got it. They're giving Castellanos, who's back in there now, a short field to operate with. Yeah, they are. Big break for Boston College. They have to capitalize. Look for Joe Griffin, number two, in motion right now. They get it to O'Keefe. Stiff arms a defender. Picks up about six. Actually, a nice job by Amari and Knight to stay with him. Number four is so dangerous out in space. Yeah, he's fast. And not just kind of fast. Talk with Moorhead, he said he's, he's the fastest guy you ever seen. <laughs> Straight line speed on the field. And Brian O'Keefe's been used a lot in the underneath stuff. He's got strength at that small stature as well. Watch Joe Griffin, top of your screen. He's the red zone threat. Instead, they hand it to Broom. Tough running. Thought that hog tie might bring him down initially, but he stays on his feet, picks up an extra yard or so. That may be enough to get him a first down. Got an injured Husky on the field. Timeout as the Time training out. staff attends to him. Timeout for injury. Let's see if we can get a number. We'll get you a number on the other side. We're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be right back. Boston College driving down 14. Off. Back in the 10 now, getting checked out. Broom was able to fight for first down yardage on that play, so it's first and 10 from the 15. Without question, the deepest penetration by this Boston College offense all day. Broom trying to stay in bounds to get extra yardage. Run out. Give him three. What we've seen so far, it's definitely a two-headed monster here with Garwo and Broom. Now Castellanos will look to run it himself. Can uh -oh. he get to the corner? No. Great job tracking him down by the Huskies. Devon Lafayette didn't let him get that edge. No, and good awareness by NIU's defense. Boston College had this big bunch into the near sideline, and they covered it up well. Looks like a little bit of a broken play. And third down. I mean, this is this is such an important down right now with five minutes left in the third quarter, down by 14 points with no momentum. You got to convert right here. Joe Griffin, watch the big guy in the end zone. He's looking that way. Now he comes back over to O'Keefe's side. That's Bond in the middle. Touchdown, Boston College. And a strike from Castellanos. 
right to Lewis Bond. We talked about Lewis Bond, his maturity, how he's grown, his smooth route running ability, and when everyone's focused on Joe Griffin and Ryan O'Keefe, watch number 11 right in the back of the end zone. Great patience by the quarterback, good route and catch by the wide receiver. Connor converts, 14-7, so BC takes advantage of the great defensive play. The turnover, they go 25 yards for the score. And it really was just your mesh route. You're gonna get inside crossers here, and then this is Bond. He's gonna to sneak towards the back of the end zone. And you get the underneath route from O'Keefe, the running back coming out, and just a wide open zone in the end zone. Great play design by Steve Shimko, and even better execution by Castellanos. Ashley Stroll line down on the field. Out of halftime, he told me, okay, the reason for Thomas Castellanos playing today, he had a great camp and he deserves it. He says switching out the two quarterbacks in Emmett Moorhead and Castellanos was all Now you're seeing the results of that. Castellanos moving this offense, connecting for his first touchdown since becoming a member of this Boston College Eagles football team. Yeah, and to clean up what Ashley said, I don't know if it broke up for you as well, but it was a plan, right? They knew they were going to use both quarterbacks, but it does look like it's favoring Castellanos now where we thought Castellanos might have, you know, 10, 12 plays. Looks like it's his team right now. Luca Lombardo in the kick for Boston College. High kick, it's gonna be taken at the six yard line by Rudolph. Bounces it outside, gets it to the 21. Here's what's coming up on the ACC network. Got Pitt and Wofford, about 3.30 Eastern time. Prime time is Old Dominion and Virginia Tech. The Pitt game, check out Phil Dracovic. Right. Yeah, former Boston College Eagle. Old Dominion and Virginia Tech. It's a big state rivalry that's a little bit more heated than a lot of people, yeah. I think, probably realize. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for Old Dominion to make a big statement in state. Sure is. They, They've done they, it before. They dominated in state last year. Yes. Here's Williams. Well, now maybe that BC defense is fired up a bit. Picks up just a yard on first down. You know, it's really interesting how one side of the ball can spark confidence in the other side of the ball. and. You saw that shot of Castellanos walking on the sideline, fired up, high-fiving his team. Dude, that type of energy from your quarterback, it sets ripple effect. And, and Boston College defense now, if they can come out and get a stop here, Boston College mentality will be completely different than it was after that first drive of the second half. A drive that the Huskies marched down and scored. Rudolph in motion, gets the handoff. Lowers his shoulder, picks up an extra couple of yards before Jones brings him down. Five in total. This is a huge third down right here, third three. Huge third down, and at third and three, you got to be ready for run or pass. They've showed already that Thomas Hammock, he doesn't mind going for it on fourth and one. He doesn't mind going for it on fourth and two, even in this part of the field. Rocky Lombardi and his legs. Watch out for the QB keeping it, getting on the edge and try to hit a flat route. Lombardi's versatility, a big reason why they're six for nine on third down. He'll look to throw, has all kinds of time. Outside receiver makes the catch, gets the first down, that's Barnes. Yeah, and there's the flat route, right? It, it's it, the edges, the perimeters of this Boston College defense are where NIU's making their hay. They're running to the perimeter. They're getting leverage and throwing to the perimeter. In Boston College, normally known as a man coverage team, they have to stay outside of those receivers, but great execution by NIU, and, and they're going to continue to attack that edge of Boston College defense. Under three minutes to play in this third quarter. 
Pitch to Brown. Got blockers in front. Gets just a couple. Another tackle by Elijah Jones. Trying to get his defensive mates fired up. Officials timeout for a defensive injury. Defender on the play. That might be Nigel Tate. It is 98. Six two three seventeen. It's not going to be easy to help up. Staff gets him to his feet, though. That's a good sign. He's favoring one of his legs. All right, coming up, Tate makes his way off. Defense comes back out. Second down and eight for Boston College. You see the time left, 2.34 in this third quarter. Long drive to start the second half by Northern Illinois. Took off a big chunk of time. And we roll it again. Brown in the backfield. Lombardi under center. Give to Brown. Maybe two yards. Another big third down on this drive for both teams. Huge third down for NIU. Keeping the foot on the gas pedal. They need to drive down this field. Kill any confidence that Boston College has. And the end result, if Boston College gets a stop, is just the opposite. Empty backfield, Gavin Williams in the slot. Lombardi to throw. Can't find Ruckowitz. This time it's Jalen Cheek defending on the play, and Boston College will get off the field on defense. That right play by Jalen Cheek is a sign of maturity. Understanding, hey, what have they been doing? They've been working the outside routes against these slots. This time he plays aggressively and does a phenomenal job of just having position on the wide receiver, forcing Lombardi to throw it out even wider than his receiver can catch it. Good job, good maturity, and this is this is progression by Boston College's defense. Good stop. Foley to punt. That's a good kick, Jade Williams. Makes the fair catch at the 18, 42 yards, net on that punt. BC's defense does their job. They get the ball back to the offense. Plenty of time on the clock for Castellanos, and you go down 14-0, and all of a sudden there becomes this sense of urgency, right? Then you score a touchdown, your defense gets a stop. As an offensive coordinator and a head coach, you get your guys around and say, okay, let's calm down, right? This is back a normal football game. We don't need to press. We don't need to make any mistakes. Let's play our type of football, get back to the run game, the play action, and just methodically move the ball downfield. Castellanos back in the game. Takis in motion. He'll stay in the block. Castellanos wants to go deep. Heavily covered, and it's intercepted. Javon Bird makes the pickoff. And Williams was covered all the way down the field. Mistake by Castellanos, and the ball goes right back to NIU. Phenomenal play by NIU's defense. And Javon Bird, you see Javon Bird here. When he gets the play away, watch him sink back and find the crossing route. Great eyes. Hey, my receiver leaves. Where are my eyes? Eyes go cross field. Let me leak back. And if he doesn't do that, probably underthrown pass anyways, but that's what made Thomas Castellanos not deliver the ball with a lot of confidence. Hey, great coverage on the outside and a huge turnover for NIU. Rutkowitz picks up eight or nine on first down. Counted off at nine before John Pupil makes the stop. An outside run, right? Outside run, outside pass. They're Testing these edges. These are, the these are the types of plays where the big outside defensive ends need to make a play, right? Set a big edge. Get in the backfield. Get upfield. Donovan Ezrak, Ushida Salah. D line supposed to be the strength of the defense. They got to set some edges. Well, BC scored on their best starting field position of the day on their 
drive down here at the 25. This is NIU's best starting field position, and they've just made it better by going into Boston College territory. Second down and one for Rocky. Delayed handoff, stopped in the backfield. John Pupil came storming in from his free safety position. John Pupil, you, you gotta love John Pupil if you're a Boston College fan. This guy was the biggest surprise of camp. He came in as a transfer from Dartmouth after the 2021 season. Didn't play at all last year. He's a guy that really walked onto this Boston College team and coaches say this dude is tough, he's smart. I mean, he went to Dartmouth, of course you're smart. And he plays with one speed. You saw that speed right there making a play in the backfield. They're going to need another one on third and two when we come back, but they're going to let this third quarter clock wind itself all the way down. That's the end of the third quarter. We head to the fourth quarter. Easy to leave here with a win in their season opener. We got to execute. When we execute, we don't go backwards. We catch the football. We don't have penalties. We're scoring. We're playing sloppy, and then we got to stop the run right now. All right, Coach, thanks. All right, thanks, guys. Got to stop it on this play. Third down and two. Lombardi under center. Right up the middle. Powering his way for that first down. That was Lynch. That was, I believe, Brock oh, Lampy. Oh, Lampy. That's the fullback, of course. That was that was your opportunity to get your guy some pub. I know. Sorry there, Brock. Brock Lampy. Brock's, Brock showed the world he got the first down, though. Look at this. That is how a full, that's fullback running. But get behind your pads. Get low. Tell you what, having something like that, <laughs> you pick it up two yards on third dot's huge. 252 pounds out of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Of course he is. Breaking just growing full box, full backs up yeah. there. And those dudes like breaking apples with their hands, you know, just like that Wisconsin strength. Still in the backfield. Now they give us to Lynch and Lampy leads the way, but not much to do there on the outside. Sheeta Salah getting into the backfield and dropping him for a loss. Good job by Salah, and it was a pretty decent edge by Elijah Jones. NIU will continue to attack that perimeter unless someone steps up. Good job by Sheeta Salah holding that for a negative gain. Now behind the chains. After a loss of one on first down, Lombardi from the gun. Keep it on the ground with Brown. Spins his way to the second level. He'll pick up about five or six. Still gonna bring up third down and medium here for the oh, Huskies. An injury out. on the well, play, that might be injury. Brown. We'll take a timeout. Take a look at the injured Husky when we come back. 14-7, NIU on top. Cole, take another look at the play where he injured it. You see the vision and the patience. It looks like that ankle just gets twisted up underneath them. Keep an eye on that injury. An obvious pain on the sideline. Third down for the Huskies. Gavin Williams now in Brown stead. Lombardi to throw. Pressure picked up. He's got all kinds of time. Now he goes into double coverage, and it's going to fall incomplete. Batson and Jones in coverage for Boston College. It'll force a fourth down, and it's fourth and seven here, or a long six. Kind of no man's landmark. Yep, but you know, no hesitation by Thomas Haddock. Always be alert for the hard count. Rocky Lombardi has been known for drawing defenses offside with the hard count. Man to man looks like across the board for Boston College. Lombardi tries to elevate it and Patterson couldn't go up to make the catch flag down. Saw some jersey being stretched there. Pass interference. Defense, number one. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. Halfley can't believe it. Jones doesn't believe it. They've shown the replay in the stands. 
stands don't like it. That I, that was there was no pass appearance there. It had to come before that. I did see some white jersey being pulled. Davis Patterson does go 6-4, so you, you understand the thought process yep. from Rocky. I'm going to throw it up there and let my guy make a play. Yeah, and Elijah Jones, I mean, he's 6'2", 190. I mean, he's the biggest of the cornerbacks. Either way, big break for NIU on fourth down, getting a pass interference call. BC's got to overcome it. Rutkowitz in motion. Give to Williams. Has some room, picks up about eight. Pupil on the tackle, but not before they got to the second level. In this play that NIU has been running over and over and over again has really caused problems. You see the backside pullers, they're gonna either bring a tight end and a fullback around along with that backside guard, and it just it's been too slow. The linebackers and safeties adjusting to that. That's been a play over and over and over again on first down has gained big yardage for NIU. Second and a long two. Lombardi under center. Rutkowitz in motion. They'll give it again to Williams. This time he lowers his shoulder and doesn't get much. He'll be shy of the first down. So down seven in the fourth quarter. And the way Boston College has had issues moving the football, this is a big third down here, Mark. I think you got to force a field goal here. It is. And you know, last time we were in this very similar situation, it was the first time we saw Rocky Lombardi split out wide and Justin Lynch at that quarterback. Now more traditional, Rocky Lombardi is in there, kind of a condensed formation. Look for the quarterback sneak or the fullback dive. And yeah, they got Lampy behind him. They'll give it to Lampy. Powers his way for the first down and more. Down close to the six. Lampy carries it for eight yards. First and goal for NIU. The middle of this defense is what Jeff Hafley said they needed to shore up. Well. It was the edge, the perimeters. Hey, let's beat them to the perimeters. Now it's up the middle. And Boston College has got to stop the run. They are going to have a very long season if they give up yardage like this on the ground. Already 132 yards on the ground rushing for NIU. Williams stuffed in the middle. Maybe got a yard. Three tight ends in the game that time for Northern Illinois, and Boston College was up to the task. Cam Arnold, you see a good shot of him there. The senior linebacker transitioned from safety in his third year now. Linebacker has really taken over as a leader of this BC defense. They need that elevated play from him and Vinny De Palma. Owen McGowan, Jalen Blackwell at that second level, especially in the run game. Lombardi quickly under center. He'll fake it to Williams and roll. He can run it if he chooses to, has some room. Leaps for the end zone, comes up just a yard shy. The helicopter for Rocky Lombardi, and I'm sure it feels good for him after suffering an injury last year to get a run like this in. You get a little pop, you, you get up and you say, hey, I'm still healthy. I mean, this is a guy who ran for 473 yards and nine touchdowns yeah. on the ground two years ago when he played a full season when they won the MAC title. And this is bread and butter. Look for quarterback sneak. If Rocky Lombardi doesn't sneak it right here, it's going to be turn around handed to, Bro to Brock Lampy. Yeah, he's got Lampy as his lone setback. He'll hand it to him. Lampy just powers his way to the goal line. No, no signal yet from the official. Now we get it. Touchdown. That was a big man power drive by Northern Illinois. 13 plays, Mark. Marched down the field, took advantage of an interception before the fourth quarter, and capitalized. Let's make sure he gets in. There he there is. There he is, falling in. 49 and white. All 13 plays on that drive, running the football. And not only running the football, but I'm going to line up number 49 as my lone back. I'm going to go under center and bring my tight ends and wide receivers close to the line of scrimmage and pick up nine yards a clip. 
Cyber with the try. They got the interception. Got a break on the PI. And just powered it into the end zone. Huskies up 14. BC 7, Northern Illinois over Boston College here at Chestnut Hill. We're at the 924 mark of this fourth quarter. Needless to say, it's a Boston College team that has not really gotten anything going offensively. Their only scoring drive of the game was 25 yards after an interception. That got them to within seven. They had some momentum, but Northern Illinois took all of that momentum back with an interception of their own, and they drove down the, the length of the field for the most part and a time-consuming drive to reestablish that 14-point lead. Yeah, and guts, right? Guts by Thomas had it going for it on fourth down, put the ball in the air, got that pass interference call, which was a huge, huge turning point in that drive. Woodle pops this one high up in the air. Ooh, that's going down. That's dangerous. And you might have got that. Still on the carpet. Officials will have to unpile it. I think Boston College, yes, has possession, but that's why you kick it off like that. You're trying to find that space in between that yeah. front line and the up men. And Taji Johnson was able to come up and make the recovery, but yeah. dangerous. Why don't we take a look at that pass interference play on the last drive for Boston College? Pivotal play. We didn't really get to see it live, but watch up here on the top of the screen. That's going to be Elijah Jones. And watch right at the top of the route. Oh, we'll come back to it. Castellanos pushing his way forward. That's a good gain of five yards on first down. Let's take a look at it again. Yeah, top of the route. You see there's a pull right there. We didn't see it on the first replay, but that was definitely a pass interference call. Jeff Halfley harped on penalties coming out of halftime. We can't have penalties, though. That really hurt us. You see Moorhead back in the game because Castellanos' helmet came off. So he'll have to sit out of play. More ahead to throw. Going for Griffin. Oh, almost made a spectacular catch, but just slightly overthrown. Javon Bird again on coverage. Very good coverage by Bird, who had the interception just moments ago. Yeah, good coverage. And you know, just watching how Joe Griffin has been running his routes and releasing. You know, he's a big wide receiver. He's got, I think that he's got to use that physicality towards the top of the routes. He's not going to run away from these DBs. Third down and five, Castellanos got options. All oh, the pressure coming, throws it out. Did he get a defender there early? No, the officials say he did not. Crowd here wanted it. Jay Sean Profit got out there. He's able to get just enough on the receiver. Take another look at this. Kind of a strange play. Yeah. You know, Tomlin was out there, and Prophet Tomlin says, wait, he got here early. Yeah, and it looked like he did get there early. And no peak back for the football. But more importantly, it's fourth down, and Castellanos in this offense is on the field. Down two touchdowns with eight minutes left, in the nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. It's now or never time. Fourth and five from their own 46. No safeties deep. Look for pressure from NIU. They're bringing it right up the middle. Castellanos is flushed. Oh, he's in big trouble here. Trying to find something downfield. This is Fran Tarkinen-esque. Now he throws for Bond, and he has him for the first my. down. Woo. That's why Castellanos is on the field. Ah, that was impressive. And who did he find? Lewis Bond, great outlet. Now we get whistles. Castellanos wanted to go quickly. Timeout. Northern Illinois. They're first. Hammock had to call a timeout. They weren't away. lined up it's like he liked them. Castellanos ran all the way back to his own 15 in that play. Uh, you know, first of all, good. Good blitz pickup by the running back, but they, that was, this is all athleticism. I mean, this is Castellanos avoiding the <laughs> umpire. Yeah, I mean, you know, the officials are out there, and I'll tell you what, this is superb coaching by Matt Applebaum, the offensive line coach for Boston College. All that scrambling and no offensive lineman proceeded downfield. They had faith in their quarterback and allowed him to make that throw. So often in college football, 
you see offensive linemen feeling like, okay, my quarterback's going to run it. They release downfield. That was a phenomenal play. And now Boston College needs to capitalize on that momentum. On fourth down, they convert. So now into Northern Illinois territory. Castellanos with the pump fake. Hangs tough in the pocket. Trying to get it to Williams, who came back for it but couldn't bring it in. Flag near midfield. Personal foul. Little hands to the face defense. Number 14. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. Correction, that's number four. The foul is on number four. Ray Thomas on the right side of your screen. Yeah, you see the hand up in the neck and continue to lock it out. Good call. First penalty on that NIU defense on the afternoon, just their second for the entire game for the team. It's a costly one, though, 15 yards. BC's in business here. Now Castellano sends Broom up to the top of the screen. Empty backfield. Five receivers in the pattern. Nobody open. Castellanos is going to sprint out. Now he finds a receiver. That's Bond inside the 20, down inside the 15. Mark, I'll tell you one thing about Castellanos. He's been very impressive on this drive, but really much of the day, keeping his head up downfield when he's flushed out of the pocket and finding something downfield. He has, and he's delivered strikes on the move. Pretty accurate with those passes when moving. Safety leaning to Joe Griffin at the top of the screen. Another pump fake. Attack is there, now he can't get out of the trouble. He does stay on his feet, though. Williams and Thomas combining on the sack. Ray Thomas, number four. Midway through this fourth quarter. Must score drive here for BC. It's second down and forever. They can get a first down at the three. Castellanos to throw. Going to the end zone for Griffin. Tried that back shoulder. Wasn't happening with Finley on the coverage. Really good throw, and those are the plays. That, that's what Joe Griffin brings to this team. He's a big body. They got him singled up. They saw the safety move away from him, and that, that's a, that should be a touchdown. That needs to be caught by Joe Griffin. Phenomenal throw by Castellanos, but a drop brings up third down and long. What are you thinking here? You want to get half of it? It's third down at about 16, 17 yards to give you a good chance on fourth down. Yeah, and you're down, I mean, you're down 14 points too. You know, sh shaky field goal situation. Your kicker's never kicked one before. Underneath, that's Griffin. And there it is, you know, not necessarily half back, but now you get back where it's a normal 10 yard passing, play, right? You have plays in your playbook for third down and 10. You can copy paste them on fourth down and 10 when you need something. Not a lot of plays for third down and 14. Well, they need something here. O'Keefe in the game, Bond. Both of them will be split up to the top of your screen. That's Griffin at the bottom. And I use showing pressure again. Looks like no deep safety in the middle of the field. They bring pressure. Castellanos to throw to Griffin in the corner. And the flag comes out. Griffin and Bird, a couple of number twos, grappling all the way down the field. Pass interference. Defense, number two. The ball be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Yeah, restricted his move. I mean, there's not much there in... in Yeah, break for Boston College. Big break. It's first down and goal. Garwo in the backfield with Castellanos. Flag down. They get a procedure call here against BC. Killer. 
full start. Offense, number 60. Five-yard penalty remains first out. Kyle Hergel. A little too overzealous. I'll move back five yards. That is the look of a coach that is not pleased with penalties. So much different game from the seven yard line than it is from the two. O'Keefe in motion. Castellanos will throw. Has all kinds of time into the end zone. Broken up. Nice play. Profit. Flag in the end zone. Maybe too nice. Let's check on it. Watch Castellano see his Holding. reads. Yep. Defense, number 24. That was. He got a hold of the jersey. Goal. Foul will be placed half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First half. So yeah. a little too nice of a play from G. Sean Profit. Yeah, and whether it was the jersey or that little hip tug kind of grabbed him around the hips with both hands. But you saw Castellano's eyes. Good vision, good camera vision going through his reads. So much space at the bottom of the screen for Joe Griffin. Power run from Garwo. Gets it inside the two. BC wants to go quickly. Tessalanos chased out of the pocket. He's running for the pylon. He'll get there. Well, ACC, you better learn this guy's name. Thomas Castellanos, the transfer from UCF, came here for an opportunity to get a shot, impressed during training camp, was not here in the spring, and he has taken control of this quarterback position at Boston College. Really good speed, and did it himself on that last play. Connor with the PAT. A tick under six minutes left to go in this one. BC right back in it. Castellanos looking to throw. Nothing there. I'll do it myself. Uses that speed to get to the pile. He's finishing it off with a touchdown run after a miracle conversion on fourth down during the drive to keep Boston College's hopes alive. And they do have hope right now. Down just seven with 5.59 to go. And now the question is, can the defense stop the run? NIU had their way on the ground last series, and you know Thomas Haddock's gonna go. If it ain't broke, why fix it? Lombardo to kick off. We got Trayvon Rudolph deep for the Huskies. Is he gonna get a chance to return it? of catching in the end zone for the touchback. Castellanos took over for Emmett Moorhead in this game, and I don't think he's looking back. No, I don't think so. And you had this big pass in the back of the end zone to Lewis Bond, and then this. I mean, you know, this is stuff that obviously you don't teach, you can't teach, but this is his playmaking ability. Another connection with Lewis Bond on big on fourth down, and then he uses his legs, gets outside the defense, and takes it all the way in. Thomas Castellanos, in my eyes, has solidified himself as the quarterback of this team, at least for the rest of this game. I mean, there, you can't take a guy like that out, and those are going to be decisions that Steve Shimko has to make as next week progresses. But right now, it's about the defense. Can Jeff Halfley, a defensive guy, get his team to stop NIU? Oh, Lombardi is going to miss his receiver. They had a big play there. Rutkowitz was open on the rollout, and Rocky Lombardi just missed him. He knows yeah. it's my fault, yeah. yeah. I know, and those are the type of plays, that's when you, you you put the wrinkle in, right? First down, we've been running this power game, power game, now let's do a play action boot off of it. And he had a wide open receiver. Boston College got lucky on that play. And it stops the clock with the incomplete pass. Second and 10. Now Lombardi from the gun. Hands it to Williams. Nothing. 
Well, to say this is a big third down yeah. right here would be pretty much the biggest understatement of the day. Third and ten. Eagles with a great chance to get their defense off the field and get decent field position. And they won first and second down. Really first down. Boston College won first down because of a drop. And so now it's third down and long. Got the pass rushers in for Boston College. George Rooks, number 91, the transfer from Michigan on the inside. And Donovan Ezeraku, the top of your screen right there. Let's see how much pressure BC brings. They'll bring five. Lombardi throws. Is it intercepted? It is. No, the officials say it's incomplete. It looked like Jones may have picked it. The officials say incomplete. But now our referee, Billy Williams, is having a discussion down here at the 10-yard. We do have a flag down. It's obscured by yeah. some of the UNI players, but there's a flag on the far side. Right by the line of scrimmage, either holding or hands to the face. Don't want to speculate, but Elijah Jones got to come away with that interception. So really on the field is an incomplete pass. Personal foul, rubbing the passer. Oh Every my six goodness. of the defense. 15-yard goes for previous spot, automatic first down. And it's Donovan Ezeraku. That is a huge call in this game. Left side of your screen. Boy, that is a tough call right there in that situation. Yeah, like, at that point, you don't want to do anything. There's no reason to touch the quarterback or give him a little shove. And Rocky Lombardi, the seventh year vet, right? Did a little vet fall. That was, as you described, a little shove. It was a little shove, but there's no reason for it either. Fresh set of downs. More adversity for Boston College. They got to overcome it. That's a good start. Rudolph dunked for a two-yard loss by Jalen Blackwell. He's been in the backfield a lot today. That's a phenomenal play by Jalen Blackwell. He's lined up across from Chris Carter. We've talked about him, the big 6'7 tight end. Says, why is this guy out here split? Probably to block me. Sees the motion coming from behind the line of scrimmage and shoots his gap, makes a phenomenal play. Again, Boston College wins first down on defense. How do they respond? Can they get the ball back to their O with 440 left? Rudolph again in motion. Lombardi the handoff to Williams. It'll force a third and long again. BC's got all three timeouts on the board, Mark, to work with. They've got all three timeouts. They have a quarterback that has a spark right now. The defense has made a couple plays, a couple penalties, but right here with three minutes and 57 seconds left, Boston College needs one. Showing pressure with the two linebackers, De Palma and Arnold. They bring Arnold. Ruckowitz held, and the flag comes out. You can see it. Jalen Sheik got wrapped up with him. Two officials threw flags on that play. Pass interference, defense, number 10. The ball be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. It's Jalen Cheek. Watch him in the slot, bottom of the field. He gets on his heels. That is 100% pass interference. Good route run. Athlete doesn't like it on, in real time, Mark, but I think if you saw the replay, you would know. Honestly, I think he did, he's upset with his player. I mean, right. that, that's a, you know, you're backing up, you get caught on your heels, and you just reach out and grab. Another first down via penalty. Williams bangs his way into the middle. One yard. And, and watch this out. Step on the Boston toes of the defender. Good job. It just first. Got, a, got the defender on his heels, and then really you have a two-way go. set the clock to 3.38. Thank you. Media timeout. Timeout on the field. 
Boston College got... Boy, oh, Coach Halfley was talking to Ashley Strohline earlier in the game about cleaning things up. Mm. You know, turnovers have not been an issue. Each team with one turnover, the teams have scored off those turnovers, but the penalties have really killed them. Yeah, it's been huge. And the penalty yardage on top of that. You know, it's been 10 penalties for 93 yards, and three of those have been resulted in first downs for the opponent. Two on this drive. Justin Lynch in the backfield. He's kind of their slash, do everything guy. Double tight end. Rutkowitz in motion. Trying to get to Rutkowitz. Got him open. Nice play defensively by Cheek, though. That is a phenomenal play. Timeout. By Chandler College. Cheek. They're second. Coming off a pass interference called against him and just wiping that clear from his mind. Watching Please track the, the receiver Three, all the way across field minutes, and then taking his shot and making a good tackle. That is a big time play from Jalen Cheek, who missed last year, most of last year with an illness. And third down. Look at the third down conversions. Vast disparity. Boston College is two for two on fourth down, but still 10 for 16 on third down. That's a pretty good day. Ashley, what's going on on the BC sideline? Yeah, it has been a range of emotion for these guys these last few plays. They're on their feet. I can tell you, quarterback Thomas Castellanos, he is standing up on the bench. He is waving his towel. He is yelling at his guys, come on, let's go. We can do this. So they are believing that this game, this momentum can shift their way, and they can leave here with a win today. Well, this is the play that will shift it if they can get it done. Williams, very conservative call on third down by... Coach Hammock and company. Boston College will take their third and final timeout. Presumably force a punt and get the ball back. So the Huskies conservative on third down. Don't want to make a mistake here in the middle of the field. They want to force BC to go the length of the field in under three and a half minutes to tie this game or potentially go for the win with a two-point conversion. Yeah, Thomas Haddock, you know, he's thinking, man, last drive, we could have had him stopped if it wasn't for a Houdini act by Castellanos on fourth down. Let's make BC prove that they can drive down the length of the field. Good stop by the defense, but now it's going to be pressure time. Thomas Castellanos... First year at BC, first few months at BC. You don't enter the day as the starter. Now you're going to have a chance to drive your team down the length of the field and a chance to tie it up or take the lead. Foley will punt it away. Williams will receive it end over end towards the corner. It's going to bounce out of bounds at about the 15. Let's see where they mark it as the official steps up. He'll mark it close by the 17. So another punt inside the 20 for Foley. I mean, Boston College, a long field to work with, with 3.23 remaining. Castellanos back in the game. It's signal caller for the Eagles. No timeouts remaining. He'll start be with uh, Garwo in the backfield. O'Keefe in motion. Castellanos keeps it up the middle. Good gain on first down. Out to the 33. That's how you start a two-minute drive. Good run, big chunk. And even though there's more than three minutes left, Castellanos wants to go quickly. A lot of pressure up the middle. As his receiver, Takis, intercepted! Tipped by Takis and intercepted by Valkersel. And there it is, George Takis. That's two drops in this game. That one needed to be caught. He does a good job. You see him at the top of your screen. Pivot back around. Little bit behind. I mean, that's... 
you got to catch that. I mean, that, that's right in your bread basket. Quarterback's making a fantastic scramble play, and yes, it's a little bit behind you, but you got you know two hands and a body on that. Great play by NIU, and Nate Valcarso, the transfer from South Dakota. May have just sealed it for the Huskies. I'll give you a couple more looks at that pick. It's funny, I was getting ready to tell our producer, hey, great route by, by George Tack is coming back to the, the quarterback and then, you know, you just gotta catch it at the top and turnovers, penalties. First game back, you limit both of those and you have a good chance. NIU did that. Minimal penalties, minimal turnovers. Look, taking a look and see if that did hit the ground or not. I don't see it. I see his possession, and if, even if it hit the ground mark, I think he carried possession all the way through. There's rule to interception on the field. Let's see where that ball goes. And from that angle, I mean, it's very difficult to tell. It would be diff I think it would be difficult to overturn it. This could be a good shot right here. Does that? With, with the, bla the black padding on his arms and everything, you can't see, you can't get a good enough look in the shadow of that ball. It was ruled an interception on the field, so he it's... He does roll off it with the other hand. Look, right here, that right hand has the ball, and then when he comes up, the left hand has it. That might have moved. Boston College might be getting lucky here, and the defense for NIU is walking back out in the wow. field. Wow, so replay official Jason Boykin is looking at it right now with our referee Billy Williams under the hood. And Boston College's offense is huddling up, and NIU's defense is huddling up. Huddling up. Wow. Game of inches, Chris. <laughs> After review, it's been determined the defender did not have possession of the ball when it hit the ground. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass to the second down, Boston College. But we have had reprieves for both teams in this yeah. game, haven't we? we when have. you think it's going completely against you, and all of a sudden you get another opportunity, another chance for Castellanos and BC. Yeah, and, if, and honestly, right now, I'm going right back to George Takis on a quick route high completion, get his confidence up. He can be such a threat and a weapon for Castellanos going forward, but he needs to have that confidence. Garwo now split. Castellanos looks his way, gets him on the screen. Pickup of about six. They'll give him five, second down and five with the clock running. Third down, check it, third down and five. Castellanos will do it on his own. He'll pick up the first down near midfield. Clock continues to wind. Remember, it doesn't stop for a first down until two minutes this year. Castellanos continues to throw and show a lot of poise. That's O'Keefe, makes the catch at the 30. 22 yards on the strike. Phenomenal throw. Great job putting it out in front of his speedy wide receiver, Ryan O'Keefe. These two played together at UCF. And now they are both stars of this Boston College offense. And going out of bounds, the clock does not stop because it's not within two minutes. I feel like time is not that much of an issue anymore. It's not. With, at the 30-yard line, I feel like now it's more a matter of just executing your plays. And they'll have four downs to do it. Castellanos, the pump fake. Now he's going to the end zone. As a receiver out there, it's Williams for the score! 30 yards! Thomas Castellanos! What a throw to Jaden Williams, who missed the last six games last year. He's back. And he has found his quarterback. And they're going for one. 
Connor just squeezes Whew. the PAT in. Remember, Connor is not the kicker that they plan to start the year with. That was Connor Litton, and Liam Connor comes in, the kickoff specialist. And he's been good today. 21 all. 83 and yards on seven plays, just over a minute and a half off the clock. And just such confidence in that throw. Understands he puts it out in front. Got the right loft on it. And a beautiful route by Jaden Williams. If that face and that emotion doesn't get you fired up as BC fan, I don't know what will. How are they gonna replace Zay Flowers? What are they gonna do? Who's gonna make those big catches? Jaden Williams comes up big. I mean, it's been Williams, O'Keefe on that drive, Bond with a Bond. couple of catches. The depth and the committee approach with this receiving room, everyone's stepping up. 26 rushing yards, 57 passing yards by Castellanos on that drive. All 83 yards responsible for. And now there's a minute 44 remaining. This defense, once again, has got to step up. After the touchback, Rocky Lombardi. Injured in the fourth game last year for UNI, or NIU rather. Been waiting, chomping at the bit. 25-year-old in his seventh season playing college football. Seventh and final season. Been waiting for just this moment. Minute 44 on the road. And Thomas Haddock, if, if the last series was any signal, is he's not going to go crazy. Uh, you know, he showed that he had confidence in his defense. We'll see here this first play. Look for a draw, a short screen play to start off this series. Lombardi to throw. Now the pocket collapses. He's on the run. Still looking downfield. Tried to get it to Williams. Threw it away as much as anything on that play. Safe play. Smart play by Lombardi. Knew that there was always the option of just pitching it out of bounds if you couldn't find anybody. A good job by Boston College's defense. Lockdown coverage on the back end. Lombardi to throw. Almost intercepted and then almost caught on the bounce. Sheik was there initially. Goodness gracious. Almost picked. Jalen Sheik. And then it was almost caught on the rebound. I know, and a little bit behind the receiver. <laughs> he almost caught that. I didn't know when the ball hit the ground. Another great play by Jalen Chief. Third and 10. Will BC bring pressure? They don't. Williams tries to run for it, gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage. BC has no timeouts remaining, so the clock will wind, but they will get it back. And who made the play? Vinny De Palma. Sixth year out of Wayne, New Jersey. We've been calling Vinny De Palma's name for years here. He's been playing football in college longer than I've been broadcasting. <laughs> That's a fact, actually. It's, a yeah, fact. it's not even being, uh, you know, <laughs> and, hyperbole. And team captain, smartest player on the team, made a big play for his defense. And, and man, clock's going to get run down. How about... 40 seconds left for the offense and Castellanos to work with and with those big plays we'll see if Steve Shimko wants to take some shots downfield or if he's happy going into overtime. Man, what a game. Week one is 
both these coaching staffs have so much to work on after week one, right? But it's just about somehow finding a way to get a W. Yep. Play through all the adversity. We'll work on things. We'll get yeah. so much better between week one and week two. They always say most of your improvement comes from between week one and week two. But now it's just a matter of just making one more play than the other guy to get the W in the column. Foley to kick. Williams is waiting for it. High kick by Foley. Williams back to his 34 where he fair catches it. 42-yard kick for Foley. No return. Boston College will have 39 seconds. No timeouts on the board. And a kicker who has never made a field goal at the college level. And that right there, that huddle doesn't look to me like it's a, hey, we're just going to take a knee type huddle. That's a supremely confident quarterback in Castellanos who thinks he can make something happen here in 39 seconds. We talk about this a lot. A lot of it is predicated on the first play, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You, you'll get a sense of what they're going to look to do. Can you get 10 or 12 yards on the first play to give you some belief you can get it done? Castellanos will throw it. Flush to the near side. Try to get it to Williams at midfield. Goes incomplete. Only six seconds went off the clock. Clock will stop on a first down. Clock will stop if Valkyrie goes out of bounds. And on an incompletion, as we just saw yep. there. Second down and 10, 33 to go. Castellanos throws it out of bounds. If I'm Boston College offensively, I, I'm, I'm taking the entire play clock here and letting my wide receivers catch their breath. That, those last routes, they, they were run by tired wide receivers, but Boston College is deciding, hey, we're just going to get up on the line of scrimmage and snap it with right. 20 seconds left. Castellanos couldn't hit Bond over the middle. So three straight incompletions, and with 21 seconds left, now Boston College is going to have to punt the ball away. Pretty good ball by Castellanos, too, but again, you're running, you're running plays a little bit too fast, in my opinion, on the offensive side. The clock is stopped. We're not going to confuse the defense. Let's get our wide receivers a little bit of a rest. Either way, great stop by NIU defensively. Man, this is a back and forth game. Yeah, Candotti was a great, did a great job in the first half, hitting Northern Illinois deep. Now good he needs line. a big kick, and that's a good one. Ooh. Just out of bounds. Rutkowitz has no chance at a return there. It would look good, but look good. Still at the 34, though. Yeah. Take some time off the clock. You don't give Rutkowitz a chance to make a special play. No, in this to me, you go out there, I think. 15 seconds left in the game, one timeout left. You take a shot to the sideline on the first play. And their kicker now has a big leg. Jake Cyber can hit a 55 yard field goal if they give him a chance. You can. And you want to try to hold on to that one timeout in case you do get into field goal range because you want to be able to take that timeout, not have to rush your field goal team on the field. They get set. You essentially need 30 yards. Yeah. So you're going to have to get a big chunk on this first play and then see where you are. And they told us that Seibert, their kicker, yeah. Yeah, he can, they'll put him out there from 55 yards away. Yeah, he can boom it. Rutkowitz makes the catch. Clock will temporarily stop. It didn't. Now didn't. it does. <laughs> I think about two seconds ran off the clock more than they would have liked. Lombardi, now with three seconds, he's going to have to go to the end zone. And he does just that. Sets it up. That was close. Holy cow. I mean, Grayson Barnes was down there. Take another look at this. This was, this was a lot closer than I think anybody would have bargained for. Yeah, you, you get nervous. 
as a defensive coordinator saying, what is there a guy doing behind my defenders? And, and that, all, I mean, that was. That was a yard away from being a touchdown. It was. It's academic now, 21 all, we head to overtime. Connolly there getting ready for the start of that game, but our guys, Chris Cotter, Mark Kurtzlick, and Ashley Strohlein hanging out ready for the second half. Jeff Halfley got to like the comeback that he's seen from his guys, y'all. All right, Kelsey, get those snacks ready. Mark and I know you've got some on the set there in Blacksburg. Settle in for this overtime. You got the captains at midfield with our coin toss with our referee, Billy Williams. As you hear the explanation of the overtime rules, here they are. Each team gets possession from the opponent's 25-yard line. In the first two OTs, read the rest after that. But that was the change a couple of years ago. Last year, they attempted two-point conversion after a touchdown and then alternating two-point conversion starting in the third overtime. Let's see if Chris can last that long without snacks in the booth. <laughs> Kelsey, send me some of your snacks. Yep. Two supremely confident quarterbacks right now. I mean, you know, Rocky Lombardi, great high school wrestler. Looks like he could be a WWF wrestler right now from Iowa. In his seventh year, he's 25 years old. He's a coach on the field. And then on the flip side of that, it's Thomas Castellanos, who's at his coming out party this afternoon here at Chestnut Hill. His team down 21 to 7. And he put him on his back in the second half. Yeah, he sure did. And. You know, this is a team that came out flat. Boston College came out flat, and there was a spark with Castellanos, and that spark has turned into a flame. Uh, and that fourth down conversion where he scrambled around and hit Lewis Bond, that was a moment his teammates believed in him. Now they need belief now. BC will get the ball first. So an advantage, a slight advantage in this case for the Huskies, because once they get it on offense, they'll know what they have to do. Garwo in the backfield with Castellanos. They'll hand it to him. Garwo powers his way up the middle, gets it down to the 20. Five yards, good pickup on first. And that's what Boston College wants to be. They want to be that power run game. And how, how dangerous can Castellanos be too if they do establish that power run game, the boot game? I mean, his ability to move and to throw on the run, as this offense develops throughout the season, that is going to be a big part of this game. Overload, unbalanced look. Again to Garwo. Runs through the back of his offensive lineman and can't get going. He'll even lose a yard. Good stop up front by Northern Illinois. Ron Gilbert, part of that group, putting the stop to Garwo. So it's now third down and six. That great run on first down to give him five yards, nullified on that defensive stand on second down. See, rushing yards fairly even in this game. They have yet to go to Joe Griffin at the top of the screen in the red zone. Castellanos is looking that way. Now he goes to Griffin off his hands incomplete. Bird on the coverage brings up fourth down. Good coverage by Bird and good pass by Castellanos, but another drop for Boston College's wide receiving core. Again, you're out there as the number one target, the number one receiver. You got to catch those balls, not only just to get better field position, but also to have defenses shift over to you. Kyle Hergerl runs on late. Not a great sign, and here it is. First field goal attempt at the college game for Liam Connor. It'll be 39 yards. 
Snap and hold are good. Connor puts a foot into it, and he gets it through. Big kick from Liam Connor. Puts BC up three in this first overtime. That's huge for Liam Connor. Think about the nerves. <laughs> Doing something you don't normally do and with extreme confidence, puts it through and you're now we're in a situation where NIU has the ability to score a touchdown and win this one. 17th straight point scored by BC in this game. And it's their first lead of the afternoon. Now it all falls back on Rocky Lombardi's shoulders. They'll go the same, dis the same direction. Ontario Brown is back in the game. Remember, he got it banged up a little bit earlier in his right ankle. Confusion up top by the defensive backfield. Yep, and Boston College is calling a timeout. You saw Elijah Jones and Jalen Cheek talking to each other, not knowing what they were doing. Well, better to call a timeout there than to make a mistake that cost you the game, that's for sure. Let's take a look at our... This comeback in BC's in the lead because of that man. Lombardi under center. Brown is tailback. Play action. Lombardi going to the end zone. Just overshoots his receiver, Grayson Barnes. Jalen Sheik on coverage for the Eagles. Lombardi had him. He had his wide receiver behind the defender. That's what happens sometimes in this, this Boston College defense. I mean, they're going to play hard press man regardless of situation. Rutkowitz in motion to the bottom of your screen. Now he comes back. Lombardi looking to throw. Oh, nice shot by the fullback to bring that one in. Inside the 10, Brock Lampy. Brock Lampy, fullback. Jalen Blackwell, number eight, got to have eyes on the underneath targets, and Brock Lampy does a great job of securing the football. The big boy running. First and goal at the nine. Gavin Williams in the backfield with Lombardi. Davis Patterson, bottom of your screen, 6'4", 200-pound wide receiver. They give it to Williams. Tries to stretch it outside. Inside the five, down to the one. Great patience. Great vision by Gavin Williams. They're looking to go quickly. Touchdown wins it for Northern Illinois. Lombardi at the end zone. Game Touchdown. over. Rocky Lombardi, the seventh year quarterback. When it comes to crunch time, keep it in his hands. Fast to the line of scrimmage. Good job getting pad level low. And let's see if we can see that ball cross the plane. I There's don't... a lot of girth on that pile, man. I don't know if you're going to be able to see anything. No, and see him come down. Not enough to overturn it. The official on the far side was first to signal. He saw enough of it to tell him that that ball had crossed the plane. There's the ball. All it's got to do is just touch that white part, go over the top of that invisible plane that extends skyward. There it is. You see it right down the bottom of your screen here. There's the football. It looks like that wrist comes down right on the line. And it's... Tough to tell, but I have a hard time overturning that. 
We'll get the final word from Billy Williams. After review, it's been determined the ruling on the field stands touchdown. Game is over. Big win for the Mac. Big win for Northern Illinois. Coach Hammock does it again, like he did two years ago in Atlanta to Georgia Tech.